I was kind of in a rush to do something. And I remember I did some demos and we sent it to them and they were like, well, we're not interested now. So, <laughs> yeah, this happened. And that what? was... What lovely place for music in the street, isn't it? Do you all have start a cherry on a tie? You're in a supermarket. Ladies and gentlemen, here she is with us. Nuria Graham is in the room to present this wonderful new album, Cyclamen, that has been released on the most one of the most prestigious record labels uh, ever to exist, uh, Verve Records Forecast. Uh, congratulations, Nuria. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, sorry to make you uh, come so early from so far away. You're living in the countryside now, aren't you? Well, I live in La Bisbal, Dampurda. Yeah. So it's a bit far away because I don't have a driving license. And, well, yeah, I'm yeah. used to taking the train, but yeah, it, it took two hours. Because <laughs> from what I've been to La Bisbal and it's not like when you live in the city that you have bus lines everywhere and a, and a subway stop. Like it, it, You really do have to plan ahead to get back into the city. Yeah, Great. but I'm used to it. <laughs> Very good uh, ceramics, though, right? Is that yeah. the place? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I have to learn. That would be nice exactly. for my, my mental health. <laughs> was Was it a bit of a career move to move out into the countryside to have like more space to write and not have the, I don't know, the fuss and the noise of living in the city? Yeah, definitely. I think that the record sounds the way it sounds because I live there. Because it's the first time I had some space to have a real piano in my living room, that I had some silence. I didn't do a lot of social life also, so I think that's basically why the record sounds like this. Yeah. <laughs> because I live in Lobby's Paul. Yeah, yeah. And uh, did, did boredom in any way, was boredom nourishing? Yeah. Uh, I I really like getting bored. I'm not afraid of boredom because I'm an only child and when I was a child I, I was bored all the time. But I used my time to do crazy stuff. <laughs> so I think that uh, now I've been... I've been trying to connect with this inner child and with uh, all of the hours in the afternoon without doing anything. And yeah, things have come out out of this. <laughs> wow. Things, things. Is, is, things is. in general. I, I was actually really, really glad to get you here on today because it feels like the album's released on Friday. It feels like this is, well, obviously Friday would have been the big kind of party, but this is kind of the Monday, the Monday release party. We think. Well, yeah. The business side of releasing an album, you know, coming and doing promotional work and 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 gearing up to. Uh, I imagine there's a tour being planned on the back of this. Yeah, yeah. I, we have uh, a lot of dates now. Well, we have two dates in Barcelona, Madrid, and then we're going back to the states. Yeah. But but yeah, I don't mind doing the promotion because normally I feel like I'm a bit lazy. But now I'm not. I have the energy. I guess that it's because I'm happy because the record has finally come out. So I don't mind talking about the record now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Can I ask about the United States? Because I was there when you played Primavera LA um, and you had loads and loads of Arctic Monkeys fans down the front <laughs> who really, really enjoyed it. How did you feel? They were very nice. They, they really were. They were really into it. And the situation was very stressful, I have to say. I, I nearly had a panic attack when the show ended because we didn't have any time to do uh, the sound check and I was going with the harp player and it was very windy and well it it was well very messy but the show was well we did the show it wasn't great I think but people were so nice that it was uh, that was <laughs> they saved the situation <laughs> so I, I totally disagree I thought it worked really really well and I thought they were really into that there was one there was one song I think you had to restart yeah and everyone was there like yeah come on come on and it was really really nice to see like um they're very nice, very nice people. And it was a great show. Yeah, very nice people indeed. Like this was the first show, and then we did I don't know it was five shows or six shows more, and I noticed that people are very nice there. I don't know, like very connected, even if they don't know you, because most of the people didn't know us. Uh -huh. But they were like very, they were silent in the shows, which was surprising because we're not used to this. Yeah. And yeah, they were very nice. <laughs> I actually feel like the album is quite L.A. in a way. And I don't quite know how to... Because it reminds me a bit of um, Astral Weeks, I think I've said before. So quite, I don't know, it, uh, is that nonsense or...? Well, I uh, this was my first time in L.A. So I definitely wasn't in, influenced by L.A. But when I was there, and especially because I listened to a lot of music that is from... I guess that there's a big big thing going on now in LA a lot of musicians that mm -hmm. I like like Blake Mills or Madison Cunningham or I don't know a lot of interesting stuff is happening there so I guess that I was influenced by a lot of music happening there mm -hmm. 
And there's that whole Laurel Canyon thing that we, we idealize from reading the music press. I don't know if you're aware of how in the 70s there was like an incredible movement of lots of artists like, was it Joni Mitchell? And, Joni Mitchell, yeah. And I don't know, just a whole bunch of Neil those Young, artists that, and they were hanging out constantly at each other's houses in the hills and they were all successful or a lot of them were successful. <laughs> and so they had time to just play music and smoke and... La Bisbal as the new Laurel Canyon. Well, <laughs> exactly. this is what I hear. I heard that La Bisbal, there's like a, you're, you're hanging out with a crew of, of very creative people. There's the people from Bino who have been doing lots, of, who you sang on one of their, wasn't it? Was, y- yeah, yeah. Yeah, Marcos from Bino is my boyfriend and we uh-huh. live together there. So And yeah, there's like a space, isn't there, where they, you all rehearse and if someone needs a vocal or no? Is this yeah, the there's kind? a studio there with Amelia and Marcos and a lot of, uh, Alej Ball, who was my drummer before. Um, he lives there too so well there's a lot of musicians and it's a very little town in, regarding like I don't know there's normally uh, well because I, I'm from Big actually and it's a very musical place too like Big? It's very big, yeah. I didn't know Big was... I, th- I always think about it for charcuteria, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, a lot of fun. <laughs> but no, there's a lot of music because there's the Mercat de Musica Viva, the Jazz Cava, which is a very famous venue. Yeah. And I've spent a lot of hours in this bar. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but that's this is what I mean, like, is... Uh, also, may, aren't Mainline Magic Orchestra also from Bisbal? Yeah, they're from Turuella, okay. next to La Bisbal. Next, yeah. Yeah, 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 we're all from around there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> there's this in, a really curious mix of different type of uh, different types of artists, different styles and stuff, and all of a sudden it's like, yeah, being on hand to, to collaborate and, and, and create new music. Mm. Can I ask something very practical? What is it like bringing a harp on tour? I would imagine it's an absolute <laughs> nightmare. It's not practical at all. <laughs> no. Because does it detune easily like a piano? Well, it's not. the tuning is not the biggest problem. It, it's because you cannot travel around with the harp, first of all, because traveling around with the guitar is not practical. Imagine a harp. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you're playing outside, for example, in a festival, like the other day, and you go without a sound engineer and you're just, well, you're left there with a lot of problems, especially if it's windy. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't make a lot of practical decisions in my life. <laughs> but <laughs> but it doesn't matter, you know, because when I was, you know, making the record, I didn't I didn't think about how I was going uh, I was going to play it live, and then I was like, oh, how the fuck am I gonna do this? But but yeah, the harp is a really important thing in the live show now. Maybe there's some shows that we can go. I did like the tour in Europe. We went without the harp. But yeah, when when we can afford it, it's nice mm-hmm. for the harp to be here. Yeah, yeah. but so uh, let's talk about the the international signing. Even though obviously your album has come out here on on Primavera labels, uh, you've 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 signed a deal with uh, Verve International uh, Forecast. Uh, did that kind of put a bit of extra pressure on you to deliver something that was at the height of? Whatever you know, a label that has put out music by Ella Fitzgerald, uh, Billy Holiday, all these in, these iconic uh, singers and musicians, did that kind of make you think? You know what? I wanna I wanna put you know put put make make life a little bit more complicated for me this time around. Well, it was um, for me. It was a, a long process because when this happened, it was when Marjorie came out two years ago, yeah. three years ago now. Like, yeah, and for some reason. It wasn't planned. We didn't send the record there. It was just because something happened in a dinner and somebody put the music and someone listened to the song and they sent it. I don't know how it happened. One morning I woke up and there was interest from the from the label and I was like, oh shit, <laughs> what am I going to do now? And yeah, it did put a lot of pressure. Well, I put a lot of pressure on myself. And then I, I was kind of in a rush to do something. And I remember I did some demos and we sent it to them and... They were like, well, we're not interested now. So, <laughs> yeah, this happened. And that what? was... What lovely place for music industry, isn't it? Like... Yeah, well, it didn't... That was two years ago. No, one year and a half. But this was very important uh, because the process and the record exists because all of all of this, you know, because um, I knew that it was a very difficult thing uh, for me to happen. The possibility was there, but it was also very far away, you know. And I got very stressed and I was thinking maybe I should do a record with a great producer, spend a lot of money or just, you know, try to do the greatest album ever. Mm-hmm. And then I thought, ah, fuck it. You know, I'm <laughs> going I'm gonna do the most risky thing to do because I've never produced a record by myself. I recorded it at home and I was like, well, if they like it this way, it's because, well, this is 
completely Nuria, this is me. And and yeah, then the record, I was thinking that maybe it was a record for birth when I was doing it. So it, I'm, I'm not normally a very ambitious person, but I think this time I was a bit. And and yeah, it worked. So, so yeah. Because <laughs> in, in 2021, you released the single At Last, um, Ready to Fool You, mm-hmm. which I really enjoyed. How does that fit in, in in your catalog like how do you see it as as because it's sort of it's in between albums it has a kind of different sound to to kind of both the albums that are around it was it sort of like a one-off experiment or what you were feeling at the time yeah a lot of people have asked me why aren't these songs on the record but mm. uh, that wasn't the idea at all because at last was a song that i recorded even before the songs in marjorie so it didn't get into the, al- the album because it didn't fit in the in the story. But then, yeah, that was two years ago, I think, that I released this. Yeah, twenty twenty. Yeah, then I thought, well, now it's time for this song to come out, and and yeah, then I recorded "Ready to Fool You," which was a new song. But yeah, I didn't have any particular idea. I just wanted to put those songs out. <laughs> well, it's interesting with the new album because it definitely has a structure. Uh, probably the one starts it proceed that two finishes it um how important is it for you to structure an album it was very important uh, but i nearly went crazy because i i made a lot of lists i had like a lot of papers on my table with lists mm. with songs and some some songs that i like didn't get into the record because they didn't fit in the in the story like and there's some songs that are in the record that they weren't my favorite ones but the the fact that I was making so many lists, I was trying to make a narrative, and the day I remember the day I discovered that Proshida one was supposed to go uh, right. in the beginning and Proshida two uh, to close the records, and now I, it was like a big revelation. Then the the album just presented itself, you know, it was like oh yeah, this makes sense, <laughs> and then all of the songs just I don't know, I was, and yeah, I don't know, I didn't have to do anything. Like then everything worked out. <laughs> yeah, can I just say how glad I am that you were brave enough to leave out some things because I think it would have been so much easier just to be like, okay, I want all of these songs and I'm just going to put them on. And I think some artists do that. Um, and it, it's weird because it's like more doesn't mean more, if you see what I mean. Mm-hmm. Like it's kind of quite nice that actually maybe the songs will come out later. Maybe I, I don't know what the plan is, but I think what you've got works really well together. If you know. Yeah, yeah. I had like, there was a song that we even recorded. We had the strings recorded and everything. It was called Torre del Greco. And it's a song that I liked a lot, but when I listened to it and I put all the songs in the list, I listened to it in that order and it was like, this song doesn't go in the record, maybe some other time, but yeah, it was very clear for me which songs got into the record and which ones didn't. Uh-huh. Well, uh, on the second single from this album, The Catalyst, you sing, we say goodbye properly with my stupid Catalan English. <laughs> Are you being self-critical? Do you have, because uh, you have such a particular accent, Nuria. You, 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 there's the bit of the Irish, but there's also the, the, the kind of Catalan Spanish in there. <laughs> yeah, I think that this, uh, this song represents me a lot because it has, I'm talking about death and stuff. But at the same time, I'm being very ironical and even funny, which I think that this is me. <laughs> and yeah, the stupid cattle in English, I think that I'm trying to represent because when I'm here, it's like, oh, Nuria, half Irish, she's uh, from, I don't know, if it was something exotic. But when I go over there, even if I go in Ireland or when I'm at the stage, it's like, what? what is this accent? Where are you from? Uh, and I, I'm trying... I'm trying to embrace it, you know, because I, I used to be a bit of sh- ashamed because people used to expect that I had like, because I'm half native, that I had like some kind of spectacular accent. And I'm like, well, I have a funny accent. And <laughs> and uh, I think it, it was, the other day I was reading a review and they were like, it, they, they said that it was exotic, like Astrid Gilberto. And I was like, nice. I, I'm not, <laughs> go- not going to change my accent now. <laughs> don't, don't, please, please. But do you, do you struggle finding your identity between, because, you know, I get a little bit of it as well. You know, I was born in Spain, but my mother is British. My father was from Suriname, you know, and sometimes it's like, where are you from? You know, that question that people ask oh. you, where do you feel most from and stuff? And, and as you say, you know, it's like... Uh, it's never going to be one place. But do you struggle mm-hmm. sometimes with that balance? Yeah, sometimes. Well, maybe now not as much. And I think that the reason why I write in English and I express... I feel like there's another Nuria. Mm-hmm. Like the Nuria that I could have been maybe if I was born in... 
I don't know, in Ireland or whatever. But when I write in, well, when I'm doing some melodies, the the lyrics come to me in English. Mm. But the funny thing is, I don't have as much as vocabulary as I would in, I don't know, in Spanish or in Catalan. But I think that I synthesize my feelings or uh, what I think in English in a different way. I have like another, it's like another Nuria. And it, it has this acid humor. I don't know, it's like another part of me. And I I can only be this Nuria when I'm talking in English. So mm -hmm. this is the reason I write in this language. Because it has like, I don't know, another personality. <laughs> I, I find sometimes that people, and maybe this is partly my own experience, that you can almost be more honest in a language that isn't, your first language if you see what i mean or i mean i'm not saying english isn't your, your first language but like maybe if you're more if you speak catalan more oh than, yeah, yeah than when you when you switch to english it kind of it feels i i, I yeah you can just sort of be more honest I, I find that myself when i'm speaking languages i don't know mm. does that yeah i feel exactly like you say because if i try to to write in catalan whatever if i'm writing music or just writing in general i feel like I don't know. I I I know this language too much, and with it, when I'm talking in English, I feel like I can say things that I wouldn't say. Maybe because I'm too shy when I say it in Catalan, and when I say it in English, I have no. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. There's no filter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. That's why ABBA lyrics are so good. I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we we mentioned uh, Van Morrison vibes earlier. I mean, and obviously there's a lot of um, uh, wind instruments uh, present on Cyclamen. Uh but on Birdman, the song Birdman, I'm getting a very strong Blackbird vibe. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people have said that to me, and I wasn't conscious. <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely there. The melody is very similar. Have, so sorry. <laughs> I, I mean, Ben spent half of his weekend listening to the Beatles. Like, uh, no, uh, okay, the Beach Boys. Beach Boys. Sorry, the Beach Boys. Um, are you still a person who listens to Beatles, or have you listened to them enough in your lifetime, and you just try and listen to new things? Yeah, I have listened to a lot of Beatles, but I haven't. Well, sometimes I listen to them, but not now. But the end, when I listen to this melody, a lot of people told me, and I was like, oh shit, well, the information just stays there, you know, even if you don't listen to a record in years, it just, the melodies are there, hmm. I don't know, trapped somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hopefully you won't get a letter from like Apple Records or whatever. Well, that would be amazing. <laughs> that would be like a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's meet up and talk about this. Yeah, you know? exactly. it's like, yeah, we have a solicitor who's going to come and visit you. He's taking the private jet. <laughs> um, what? Which was the the hardest song for you to finish though, of Cyclamen? One that was like, ah, I just can't find the hook or you, you were rearranging things. I don't know. Does that happen to you? It does happen, but the, the most difficult ones to make are the ones that are not in the records, I think. Uh -huh. Most of the songs, I'm trying to think, because for example, the ones like Catalyst or or the other ones, they came, they came out very fast and very easily. Mm -hmm. But for example, uh, Yes, It's Me, The Goldfish, Yeah. it was hard to finish, but not because it was hard at the moment, because it's because it's a song that it's five or six years old, but I never finished it because it didn't go anywhere, I don't know. And then when Malkus was playing a, a beat, and then the idea came to me with the chords, and the, I finished the lyrics very quickly. But it, it took six years to finish this this song. Imagine. <laughs> That's one of my favorite songs on the record. Yeah. Um, and I like it because it feels to me like it has the touch of humor you were talking about. Um, what is it about exactly? Is it about sort of? I've heard someone say it was about being in the public eye and feeling like in the goldfish bowl, or. or... Yeah, uh, I don't really know what is it about. I'm I'm still trying to figure out what am I talking about. <laughs> but um, I think that because there's various like animals and and characters in the record that are watching this thing happen. This thing happening, it's supposed to be the volcano exploding, but it could be something else. I think that's more in, in a universal way of you know everything that has been going on for the last years and. Um, my feeling of being at home, just kind of observing and being happy in the fishbowl. I felt a bit like the, like this goldfish trapped, but also happy to be trapped in this place. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I played with the concept that uh, the fish, the fishbowl was also like you know the the witches. How do you say the cauldron? Yeah. Witches cauldron. No, yeah. El caldero de la bruja. No, la, la bola de. Oh, the 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 the, oh. the crystal ball. Yeah, the crystal, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah, I felt like uh, it was a crystal ball also to 
when you see the future and this goldfish is trapped inside this thing and he sees the future. Uh, wow. And that, that, I think the song is about this, but I'm not sure. Oh, it, 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 it's, a, it's a gorgeous song. I've, I've got this on repeat as well. Um, we, we, we're almost running out of time. We asked you for a selection of uh, three songs to to play here on the weekly or listen to a bit of uh, th uh, songs that may or may not be have something to do with the inspiration or music that you've been listening to while you were making Cyclamen. Uh, let's start with the song Just Wrong from Pino Palladino and Blake Mills. Tell us about this uh, this this song, Just Wrong. Uh, have you been, uh, and you mentioned them earlier, that it's music that you've been listening to a lot recently. Um. Yeah, this song has influenced me so much in this record. Um, I think that the, the, the way that uh, Pino and Blake use the textures in this record, the whole record is very interesting and it's amazing. Um, I'm a big. I, I was always a big fan of Pino Palladino the way he played, but this thing that they've done together with Blake was, I don't know, it changed a bit the way I understood music even, and and maybe it's the song that I've listened the most in two years, like like obsessively, because it has this kind of it. It sounds a bit like it. it it's it's like a soundtrack of a movie or something. You see the images, you see the colors, and with a lot of records now, I I feel like I see the color palette. I don't care which style it is, but I, I don't know, it brings me to some kind of dimension. And this song did this, and yeah, it's been a great influence. Do you, do you, does that ever help you watching movies and, and or creating like a, a, a mood board inside your head where you have some images of movies or scenes or photos even? Yeah, I guess. It's not that I watch a lot of movies, but then, I don't know, I'm very interested in the soundtracks of a lot of movies. I, I've, I've been listening to a lot of you know, like Italian um, movie soundtracks from the yeah. 60s or whatever, but just because of the textures and it, without even seeing the movie, you can see, I don't know, the colors and the, the scenery, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the materials even, <laughs> no? I, I, I know what you mean. Uh, let's listen to the next cut. Uh, this is a song from one of the greats, uh, Tom Waits, Sins of My Father. Took it all and took What's your first memory of hearing Tom Waits for the first time? I was very young because my parents were kind of fans of Tom Waits, but it, it brings me back. My my father used to have a friend in Ireland and he had a band that sounded just like Tom Waits. And I remember this, I don't know, the sound brings me back to childhood memories. Hmm. But um, my I think it was my mom, she gave me a, a vinyl. It was, uh, I think it was Frank's Wild Years, which yeah. is a very... It's not this record, but it's a very weird record. And when I went on my first flat in Barcelona, I used to listen to this record obsessively because it was, I don't know, so <laughs> so weird. So, did the music you listened to, your parents listened to, influence you a lot? Um, in some way, yeah, of course. Yes, because even like my, my mother was a big fan of Bjork, for example. We had the cassette of Debut, which I don't know, it, everything has been an influence because I remember all of the songs perfectly because... Well, when you're young, you have this big memory. You yeah. Know? And, and you played yeah. tapes from front to back on the car or, you know, remember that you would remember the order and you know that, oh, after this one comes crying and... Yeah, 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 yeah. Something that it's has been lost with streaming. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Shall we play the next song? The last one uh, or that you brought in? So. Plastic Palace People from oh. Scott Walker. My mother's calling his voice. What can you tell us about Scott Walker? Oh, um, I don't remember the day I discovered him. I, it must have been years ago now. But you know this dimension I was telling you about with the color palettes? And I don't know how to explain it because there are some songs that, that in some records of Scott Walker, Walker that maybe I don't like as much, but they're all there in this kind of weird dimension. And he he's done like very weird <laughs> weird things yeah. but he has this kind of special sound which is just he sounds like himself it's impossible to sound like him he's just there's only one uh, one Scott Walker in the world and this song in particular um, Artur Tort a friend of mine he showed me this song probably two years ago when I was in the process of writing and I listened to this song obsessively because it has like it has like three different parts and it changes a lot he always does this strange changes in the songs um, 
But yeah, I don't know. It was something about this song that was very magical, and I, yeah, I wanted to follow this path, whatever, <laughs> wherever it was. <laughs> hmm. Do you uh, do you ever catch yourself having those kind of uh, ambitious little dreams of like I want to leave behind something as solid as you know the the, the Scott album, Scott one, Scott two, Scott three. You know what? Or is it just the process of look? I'm an artist. I'm a musician, and what I do is I release albums and I go on tour. Are you like pragmatic, or do you have that little? Um, yeah, that 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 I don't want to I don't want to make it sound like oh this uh, this uh, uh, avarice uh, not yeah, ambitious. it's like a dream, isn't it? Yeah, you know, like, of like you well, know not just any way. You know, I just I want to. Well, I think that the, the I feel like I'm ambitious in the way that I always want to keep moving forward, mm -hmm. but I don't feel like I have to make like it's a great record or whatever. I think it's impossible to make your, I don't know, the mature record, the, the one that defines your career. There's not a record that defines your career because I think the whole, uh, all of your history defines yeah. it. So I think that in this way, I just want to keep looking for, I don't ever want to stop searching for, I don't ever want to feel like, oh, this is it. You know, this is great. I've done it. You know, <laughs> yeah. you cannot have this feeling if you're making music because there's always a step more that you can take or, I don't know, change your direction. So... The thing is not to stop looking for things. Yeah, because <laughs> your first record was ten years ago, wasn't it? I think. Yeah, I don't consider it a record, but it was like the first demo, and yes, it was exactly ten years ago now. My first show was ten years ago. <laughs> oh, so okay. Ah, wait, is it? Does it ring a bell? No, 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 no. no that was. That's the second record. Yeah. The f the first demo I first I tracks. released first tracks. Oh, yeah, yeah 2013. I, so. <laughs> don't listen to this. No, I I'm I'm even proud of it now. A, a few years ago, I used to be like, well, not ashamed of it because, well, I was very young. It's the first thing I did, so I'm very proud of it now. You know, yeah. it's, I didn't even know. I've never been in a studio. I never recorded anything. So, yeah, that was a fun thing to do. I was only 16, and I felt so so old at the time. No, I thought that oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the queen of the place and then I'm like oh shit I was so young now I can see it <laughs> but, but did you did you have any idea like any inkling that you might still be doing it 10 years later oh yeah I think I was quite determined about that I didn't plan it but I I knew that I loved doing this you know it, I think it's the only thing I can do because I'm not very good at anything so I, I guess that I knew that this was something that would bring me because not not only because of the music itself but because you surround yourself with other people i don't know i've met so many amazing people thanks to this and yeah i i don't imagine myself doing something else but look how far you've come that you know even though you're surrounded by incredible artists and and you can choose who and you know because there's i imagine there's a long line of people who'd be who'd love to work with you and and like add uh, whatever they they can bring to the table but cyclamen is you, you know you produce this on your own right yeah. I mean, how do you get to that kind of bra that brave spot where you're like, you know, as you mentioned earlier, it's like, fuck it. Uh, you know, I could go, I could ask to go and record in New York or well, it's like, no, 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 no. I'm staying here in Amporda. It weren't, weren't there moments of like incredible fear of, damn it, you know, I'm, if, if I fuck up, this is me on my own. You know, I don't have anything to fall back on. Yeah, well, anyway. I, I was very insecure, but I think that everything takes time. You know, I didn't decide to produce myself many years ago because it wasn't the moment you know i think that working with with people have is i'm i am who i am because i've worked with the people i've worked with you know you don't see you don't do things on your own never even if you produce yourself you always need to be surrounded by by the you know the correct people to do yeah. this but but yeah the decision just came out because there was like a even a physical need that i needed to prove that it was possible and i feel like it has like a bit of a uh, first record energy because of this and I don't want to stop having this feeling of the first record energy because yeah. well the fact that you're not an expert when you're doing something and you're you're like yeah, you're kind of scared but also it's it this is what makes it like a game you're playing with with the unknown and and that was the interesting thing to do because I produced it <laughs> well congratulations Nuria it really is a, an accomplishment uh, I mean I was you know, I think yeah, you're you're entering what we like to call a, a kind of an imperial phase. You know, Marjorie was like five star. Uh, <laughs> this is another five star. You know, it's just a, a hell of a run. What what? Where would you go next? Would you do you feel like repeating the process of producing it all on your own, or it's like okay, I've done that. Now I'd like to do a, an incredibly collaborative uh, kind of phase. I'm not I'm not sure, but the thing I'm feeling these days is thanks to this record, and now I'm uh, I'm playing with with a, a new band with 
new musicians that are bringing a lot of magic to the songs. And now I feel like I need to use this magic to make something new. So probably I'm not going to produce, I'm not going to do the same process. That's for sure, because I've already done this. So mm. the, the next one is going to be made in a different way, but I'm still not sure how. <laughs> Well, it'll be no doubt be top class. <laughs> and there's there's live dates coming up: uh, Madrid, Barcelona, Villafranca. Yes. Del Penedès. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yes, uh, the, the Castellers. They they always win Villafranca. Yeah, the best ones. Yeah, they're the best. They they're the ones who reach like almost 12, 12 levels of, of height. <laughs> it's it's incredible. No, isn't there one, another another uh, place? The place where they invented calzots. They're big on Castellans as yeah. well. Yeah, well, it's usually Villafranca. They invented anyway. Bows, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then North America and London and Europe and all, all kinds of places. I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're now you're now part of the world, Nuria. Uh, well, you've always been a part of the world, <laughs> and now now every, we have to share you with 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 the rest of the world. Uh, so thank you so much for coming in on this uh, Monday morning. Congratulations on Cyclamen. Cyclamen or Cyclamen? <laughs> I, I, it's cyclamen, I think, or cyclamen. I remember once I said I said it in English, but I pronounced it so badly as a tricklamen. And it was, this was to Blake Mills, and he said "sick woman," and he understood "sick woman" instead of "cyclamen." So imagine. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's your album. You can call it what you like. If you want to call it like mumble, then exactly. there you go. It's up to you. Exactly. Well, uh, congratulations, Nuria. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me.